working on the installation of the conductor in the Senior 20, it's very crowded inside the organ. And I found it very convenient to make a little test stand and it holds the transport mechanism for the platform and the power supply and the servos for the conductor. This is held onto the linear rail by one machine screw up from the bottom and a wood screw that goes into the pressure box. So it's very convenient to just remove those two uh, fasteners, take this out and plug it into the organ. It's the same connection that goes into the back of the organ. It has four wires that control the servos and the transport mechanism. I made this little control box and it gets its power from the same plug that we plug into the back of the organ off of the battery pack. I can turn the servos on or off. This is what animates the conductor. I can power it out. Power it in. Or stop it anywhere in between. I had the unpainted version here with all the control linkages in that. Since I have more than one, I will now replace this guy with this guy, adjust the linkages and it will be ready to install in the organ prior to running hoses to all the pipes. The wire comes up here and you slide this in. This piece, you have to have this at a bit of an angle it dogs into this slot that it drives. You want to make sure that the set screw is tightened on the motor. And there is a blind nut that has to line up with this hole. So slide that on there and we move this back until that hole lines up. And you can just feel it with your finger. It's fairly difficult to get to and a real bear to get this started, but that holds down on this assembly and then the sheet metal screw goes into the pressure box. The easiest way to do this, reach under here with a needle nose and start that up through that hole. Take a ball socket wrench and all the time you have to be real careful this doesn't fall out of there. This conductor will fall right on the floor before this thing is nailed down. Just keep turning that ball and wrench. It's a little difficult to get to but it is doable. Okay, now that is in there and it's just finger tight. You shove this part down in here and this wire clips on to a wire clip. That's part of this red box. This red box was made for the conductor mechanism. Power supply and nano that drive the servos could retract back into this and it would not get entangled or interfere with the hoses that are coming out to the front of the organ. And you also have to stay out of the way of the spring and everything has to be above the maximum extension of the reservoir. So like I said, it's getting pretty crowded in here. With the conductor extended outwards a little bit, I can get in here with a long Phillips and tighten the screw that holds this to the pressure box. Next we install the three pipes inside the front of the organ and for these pipes, we make sure that we've put these two adapters on here which allow me to get my hoses connected around this pipe. This goes down under the platform a little bit. Rotate it up. And we want to put a couple of screws in each side. Make sure this doesn't fall out on the ground. And we run the conductor in and out, make sure everything clears and works smoothly.
I expect most of this, the hoses will be connected by reaching in from the back side and connecting the hoses to this side and then running them up to the tracker bar. This organ case is three inches deeper than what's shown on the plans. And the first organ, 17 pipes were mounted across the front. In this organ, there's 14 across the front, three in the back here behind the front panel, and the three base pipes in the rear. On John Smith's organ, let's see, it's 11 and a quarter deep, and this is 14 and a quarter. And on his, I believe he only had 10 pipes in the front. And he had a bunch of pipes mounted up underneath this pressure box. The base pipes come in here. Two screws that hold it on this side. One comes down through the pressure box. And this goes in place and gets connected to the three largest hoses from the tracker bar. Then the back plate goes in with the motor drive. In the back of this box that the conductor platform retracts into, this is the only wire that has to follow that in and out of the organ. I have the front grill sitting here just temporary. It's held in place with a couple pieces of tape. There will be a decorative trim strip that goes around both sides and the top. And with the conductor retracted, everything is pretty much inside of this plane. The baton sticks out a little bit. This is a 24 volt DC motor that I'm running on 12 volts. This is argon run, argon off. Momentary to this side, you hold this down, reverses the motor and that's for rewinding. Speed control for argon speed. That extends the conductor platform retracts the conductor platform. This turns the conductor on, turns the conductor off. A 12 volt DC power input. The 24 volt DC motor and this is a DC motor speed control. The variable pot is what causes this to regulate the speed of the motor. This is a double pull double throw switch momentary to one side this reverses the direction of the motor, turns the organ on, and the reverse direction is for rewind. This is a single pull double throw switch, extends the conductor platform, retracts the platform, and a simple on off switch to turn the conductor on and off. Power in, and this is where the umbilical cord plugs in from the front of the organ. This makes it very easy to take this out of the organ. A closer look at the wiring. The four wire connector from the front plugs in here. So down in that slot. Always hold on to this. There's not a whole lot of clearance in here. Pushes in like that and there's five screws that hold that in place.